Hi and welcome back to another episode of Better Than The Best where we take popular restaurant and fast food menu items suggested by you and make them better. Today, without any further ado, I'm jumping straight into the recipe and we are making Indigal Biryani. Wait, am I allowed to say that? Traditional biryanis here in Tamil Nadu are usually served with an onion raita and salna. But today, I'm only going to be making the flavorful biryani. There are two main components to this biryani. The flavorful jiraga samba rice and the also aromatic biryani masala which will be the best that you've ever smelled. I'm adding some peppercorns, some kalpasi. I actually forgot what this is called in English so you can let me know in the comment section if you know that. Some cloves, cardamom, cinnamon, and star anise. I'm reserving the bay leaves to use them later. The spices in this blend can be dry roasted for a few minutes, but it's not compulsory. So I'm blending as is. I want a coarse powder for this masala. And here you have the best ever South Indian biryani masala. And just like I said, it's coarse in texture. There are many versions of this Dindigal biryani, but this is my version. So let's get cooking. Today's episode is going a little too fast, no? Less talking, more cooking. Just like someone told me in the previous video in the comment section. But Srinath, tell me, is it even my video or my series if I am not talking? Okay, anyway, let's get to it. Here I have some ground nut oil. Wait, before that, if you want to cook the recipe, don't worry, because I'll be attaching it in the description down below. Equal parts of ghee. I'm adding the bay leaves that I reserved in the beginning. Next, I'm adding my sliced onions. You can also add chopped onions. Like I said, there are many versions to making this biryani and this is probably the first difference. Some versions also use shallots or chinna vengayam like we say, but I prefer to use regular onions. You want to saute the onions until they turn translucent. They don't need to be golden brown. I've used equal quantities of ginger and garlic in this recipe. Again, I want to saute this until the raw aroma goes. In go my tomatoes. I finally chopped a tomato for this. Again, you barely just want to cook this for about one or two minutes. But in the meanwhile, I'm also going to add my green chilies. This meat for the chicken, mutton or I think that's, I think I am going to give a very diplomatic answer for the best meat in biryani. It completely depends on your preference, completely depends on your restrictions. Again, not everyone eats all meat, as you know that. It's more than controversial and I don't think I want to go there. But yes, this specific biryani in this specific restaurant that we are talking about, I think mutton biryani sells the best over there. Next is my favourite biryani masala. Red chilli powder and salt. Next, I'm adding some whisked curd. This no, I'm afraid to make a mistake also. You guys will make me a joker then. <laughs> and mint and coriander. I finally chopped the mint and coriander. There's slightly more coriander than there is mint. Now that my biryani masala is almost ready, fast and easy, right? It's time to add my meat. I've chosen to add chicken, but you can add mutton or the forbidden meat. However you want to call it, you can add whatever meat you want. You can also add vegetables. What I'm going to do now is just give this a good mix. Ensure that the meat and the masala is mixed together. And then I'm going to cover it and cook it for 10 minutes. You don't have to add any water here because the meat will release its own water. Now that we have a 10 minute break, let's do a kutti history lesson. 10 minutes has passed, so it's time to finish this biryani. Now I'll add the required quantity of water and bring it to a boil. 
The ratio that I typically use when making chicken biryani is 1 is to 1.5. That is one part of rice to 1.5 parts of water. And let's quickly bring this to a boil. Speed up the process by covering it. So the rice that I'm using in this biryani, I soaked it for roughly about 20 minutes. And once the stock comes to a boil, I'm going to add in the rice. I told you how long to soak the rice for roughly about 20 minutes. But I forgot to mention that you must wash the rice really well at least 3 to 4 times until the water starts running clear. Now we want to continue boiling this until the level of the water and the rice are even. So I'm adding the lemon juice right at the end. Since this is the stage where I'm finishing off the biryani, it's also where I urge you to taste for the required amount of salt and spice and you can adjust it as per your liking. One final mix. Time to cover and cook on a low flame for 15 minutes. It's done cooking and I've switched off the flame. After all, better than the best is my series and I want to win every episode. So let me do my final magic touch before we head on to the plating. This is my magic touch. Two generous spoons of ghee just before I mix it. One's a 300 rupee chicken biryani and the other one's mine. I've tried to make them look as identical as possible, so let's call our judges. <laughs> Here are our judges, so I request you to taste both and tell me which one tastes better or anything else that you would like to add. OG biryani eater, huh? OG is OG in the ring, OG, original. You can eat it in the hand. You can eat it in masala. Yes, score. Aromatic masala. It's a little flat. It's a blend. The rice is very thin. It's very thin. The rice is very thin. It's a little bit of a mix. It's a little bit of a mix. It's a little bit of a flavor. It's a little bit of a flavor. It's a little bit of a flavor. Super! We have the winner. If you like this video, share it, subscribe it, and subscribe it. Comment it.